Today, I wanna to take a deep dive into my blood work. If you've watched this channel, you know that I've had issues with cholesterol in the past. We're gonna take a deep dive into that. I'm gonna talk about how I kept my cholesterol low for so long, despite it being up over 300 at one point. We're gonna take a deep dive into it. I'll show you my hormones. I'm gonna show you everything. There's no secrets here. I'm starting testosterone replacement therapy. This is my pre-TRT blood work. So let's get into it. First thing, let's look at the lipid panel. So if you look at my total cholesterol, it's nice and healthy. Typically wanna see it under 200, mine's at 181. HDL, 75. Anything above 40 is seen as good, especially in men, it's at 75. Um, triglycerides are 85, LDL cholesterol, 88, and my non-HDL cholesterol is 106. This all looks good. Um, I believe that the reason my cholesterol looks so good right now has to do with my high fiber diet. So I lowered my cholesterol by over 140 points without statins by simply changing my dietary intake. I think there's a time and a place for a ketogenic diet. I think there could even be a time and a place, especially for some people with autoimmune disease, for a meat-based carnivore diet, nose to tail, eating organs and, and, and muscle meat and all of that. But for me personally, I still feel good when I have some carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates that are high in fiber, and it has improved my blood work pretty dramatically. So I do have salmon twice a week. I have healthy fats all the time. I don't eat a lot of sugar, and I do have a high fiber diet. And I believe that's why my lipids look pretty good. Right above my lipid panel is high sensitivity C-reactive protein. Basically, that's a measure of inflammation in the body. Mine is nice and low. It's less than 0.3. That tells me I don't have an infection and I don't have systemic inflammation. Sometimes people get freaked out if their HSCRP is super high, and they should be, um, but that can just be an indication that they have some sort of infection. Maybe they have a virus, maybe they have a cold, maybe they have the flu, maybe they have an infection somewhere, but I don't have any of that. Um, if you're somebody that does have super high C-reactive protein, like we have sometimes here at Steel Health and Hormone Center, we typically do a retest in 60 days and we, we check again. If it's still high, then we gotta do some intervention there. But if it's back down to the normal range, you may have just had a virus. So if you have high, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, don't freak out, but definitely get a retest. But mine looks nice and good. We're going down to my metabolic panel, glucose 88, Hemoglobin A1C, which is basically, it's a measure of your average glucose, 5.4, estimated average glucose at 108. All looks good, I have no issues here. Vitamin D, 48.8, I like to see it right around 50, which is about where it's at. They say that optimal is over 30, but based off of what I've read, and this is just what I'm doing for me, um, over 50 is about right. So I take 5,000 IUs of vitamin D every single day, I'm outside, I mean, I live in Pittsburgh, so it rains a lot, but I'm outside all the time. And I think that helps a lot with my vitamin D levels as well, getting some sunlight. We look at my comprehensive metabolic panel. There's a couple things that stand out here. Overall, it looks pretty good, but my blood urea nitrogen is outside of the normal range. That can be a result of lifting weights, which I do. So I'm not super concerned with that. I'm gonna do follow-up labs after I start TRT, keeping an eye on this, making sure that it doesn't keep going higher. If it does, we need further investigation, but I do believe based off of my research that the blood urea nitrogen is high, largely because of my lifestyle. I lift weights all the time. Creatinine, also high. I take creatine five grams every single day. That can be a result of that. It's just barely outside of the range. I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. Globulin, also a little low. That could be lifestyle related, something that I'm gonna keep an eye on. But other than that, comprehensive metabolic panel looks pretty good. E, GFR, which is basically, um, it's, a, it's a proxy for how your kidneys are functioning, look good, not too concerned about that. Cortisol, 13.6, which is technically within range. I got my blood work at 7.30 a.m. That changes based on the time of day, based off of Quest, their labs. Um, my cortisol is within range. It says 4.8 to 19.5. If you take the test between 6 and 10 a.m., that's assuming that you're not on night shift and that's when you wake up. I'm still within range, but it is a little bit higher than I like. I think that just has to do with my lifestyle. Um, I do the best I can to manage stress, but I do have a, a fast growing business. I have a rental property portfolio. I have a kid on the way. I'm renovating my house. I have a lot going on. Um, I don't sleep the best but what am I gonna do? I have a kid on the way, it's not like I'm gonna sleep better. I just gotta find a better way to regulate this. Going down the list, when this is where people really want 
to see. It has to do with my hormones. First and foremost, DHEA sulfate, which is a proxy for DHEA, is low. 122.6, the range is 160 to 449. What causes that? There's a lot of things that can cause that. Um, I was looking at hard exercise that can cause that sometimes is low DHEA sulfate. So that could just be a result of my lifestyle. That's something we're gonna keep an eye on, but I'm also gonna take 50 milligrams of DHEA every single day. I think that's gonna get it within range. You don't want it too high. I noticed that there's some patients we have that when the DHEA goes too high, they start to get anxiety. So I want it basically right in the middle. I do think that that's gonna have some benefits with energy, it does seem to have some independent benefits with energy. DHEA. Um, it's upstream of a lot of hormones, but it does have some of its own effects in and of itself. So I'll probably notice some energy and some sex drive. Estradiol is low, 19. Estradiol is very important in men and women. It's important in men because of their brain health and bone health. I don't want it that low. I think that could be a result of a supplement I was taking called DIM. That's like a, I mean, some people say it doesn't work. I don't know. My estradiol is low. Something's causing that. Um, it could be the dim. I'm going to stop taking that. It's probably going to go up when I start administering testosterone replacement therapy, but I'd like to see it within range. I'd like to see it. What we notice here in this clinic is when men's estradiol is 120th to 125th of their testosterone, they seem to feel good there, but everybody's different. This is just my blood work. This is just what I'm doing. You should always work with a qualified medical professional before you do anything to try to manipulate it. IGF-1, it's 70. It's a little bit on the lower end, but still within range. Um, could that go up if I ate a little bit different? I eat super late at night because I get home super late. I could probably get it up if I change my lifestyle, but I'm growing a business. The chance of me getting home early is very slim. There's a medication that eventually I want to try. It's called Sermorelin. Basically, that's a medication that will interact. It's called a growth hormone releasing hormone peptide analog. It's a lot of words. It basically interacts with your brain to increase your body's natural HGH production and IGF-1 is a proxy for measuring HGH. So if I can get that up, that'd be awesome. And I'm not going to start that medication yet. I basically just want to start with testosterone, HCG, and an ARB feel that out for 10 weeks before I start with anything else. But that's something that will be addressed. It's in normal range, but I'd like to see it higher. Uh, with patients that we do get their IGF-1 a little bit higher, they notice faster recovery. They notice a lot better sleep. Luteinizing hormones right in the middle. It makes sense. I'm not on testosterone replacement therapy. We notice when guys go on TRT, their LH and FSH basically go to undetectable levels. I'm not on that, so obviously mine is, is within range. Testosterone, 467. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit different. Some people look at that, oh, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Maybe for you, you'd be fine, okay? I've been tracking my testosterone now for years. Um, when I was 26, it was over 800. I've had it as low as 380 over the last six months, and this is the highest it's been over the last no, that's not true. It was up to 500, then it was down to 380, now up to 467. Some people will look and say, okay, you know, you're in range. Your average doctor will say, you don't need testosterone replacement therapy. Do I need it? Can I get through the day? Sure, I can get through the day. But for me, I want to optimize my life. I don't want to just get through the day. So I would like to see my testosterone in the higher normal range. And that's why I'm doing testosterone replacement therapy. Free testosterone, that's on a range of 4.5 to 25. I'm right at 4.9, still within range, but on the lower end of that range. Percentage of free testosterone is 1%, just, just outside the normal range, a little bit low. And that has to do with my sex hormone binding globulin, which is very high. I was doing a lot of research into why that's very high. Again, this is something I'll probably want to retest, but it could have some issues to do with your thyroid or your adrenal glands. So we're gonna keep an eye on this. If it won't go down, then we're gonna need some, we're gonna need some imaging. But again, just because something's out of range the first time, you probably need a retest. Like I said, I've been checking my testosterone. This is my third testosterone test for me personally. And I noticed that it has been going down. Um, it's basically staying between three and 500 now, but it's way down from over 800 when I was a little bit younger. So we're gonna keep an eye on that, retest that in six weeks. But if you look at my thyroid function, it actually looks pretty good. TSH is in the range, T4 in the range, T3 in the range. All of it's basically smack dab in the middle. So there could be something else going with the SHBG, my sex hormone binding globulin, but we're gonna keep an eye on that. 
but thyroid looks good. No reason to address that. PSA, that is prostate specific antigen that basically looks at you know, if it's super high, it could be a couple of different things. You could be dealing with some issues with your prostate, maybe even prostate cancer, maybe BPH, or you could have just ejaculated that morning. So what I, I tell guys, it's kind of awkward before their blood work. I tell them, you know, don't get laid or beat off the night before. Um, sometimes you need a couple days. If your PSA is super high, then you may need a retest and make sure that you're on a, a bit of a dry spell, at least a couple days. Cause we notice guys that you know, crank one or they, they get laid right before their PSA is, pre, is pretty high. Now we're looking at my hematology. Only one thing stands out here, white blood cells out of range. Now I would normally freak out about that if I wasn't so up on my blood work. I've gotten CBCs for a long time. My first blood test was with an actual pretty progressive doctor when I was 17. That's how he found my high cholesterol and my white blood cells have always been low. There's a lot of things that can cause that. Leukemia is one of them. Do I think I have leukemia? No, I don't. I think that the rest of my hematology looks pretty good. It's probably a result of my lifestyle. Could be that I'm overworked, underslept, and I work out all the time. That could be why my white blood cells are low. But if this is something that becomes an issue, then we're going to need to talk to a hematologist. Neutrophils, also a little bit low. Uh, that could make sense. I mean, I'm always getting skin infections. I wrestle, I box. Uh, I always get something on my skin, but something to address if necessary, something to keep an eye on for sure. And that's pretty much my blood work. So I wanted to do comprehensive metabolic panel. I wanted to do lipids. I wanted to do inflammation. I wanted to do my hormones. And I wanted to show you guys that before I start testosterone replacement therapy. We're going to keep a close eye on this. I'm going to do different installments on my blood work so you guys can see exactly how TRT changes it. I'm hoping it only changes it for the better. If it changes it for the worse, I'm going to be open about that. I'm going to be honest about that. And I'm going to address that. We're going to do this together. We're going to figure out the best way to do testosterone replacement therapy in the safest way possible. So you can learn something about it. So look guys, if you learned anything in this video, do me a favor, like the video. If you're interested in content like this, subscribe to the channel. If you're in the state of Pennsylvania and you're interested in hormone replacement therapy or medical weight loss, and you want a white glove approach like I'm doing on myself, we can do for you, then go on our website, Steel Health and Hormone Center. I'll put it in the description below. Center is spelled R-E dot com. Fill out a contact form. We'll be in touch within a day. Again, guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.